Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Paula's Network. We first um, designed this YouTube channel to educate women, primarily women who are going through breast cancer, to kind of guide them through the process as they go through treat diagnosis and treatment and recovery from breast cancer. But we have made it, we have actually changed the focus to anything that will uplift, you know, the life of a man or woman or, you know, bringing real educational material in addition to breast cancer. And sometimes even DIY stuff, like during the pandemic, we came out with um, how to make masks and we have shown how to, you know, wrap your head beautifully and it, that will serve any woman, you know, in addition to the breast cancer woman who's going through chemotherapy and losing her hair. So Dr. Paula's Network is really a channel that is made to uplift, educate, empower. Today we are going to be talking about genetic testing for breast cancer. We are on our path again with breast cancer education. Genetic testing for breast cancer. Now there are a couple of genes that um, are, are checked for in a man or woman called BRCA1 and BRCA2. Well, we say BRCA1 and BRCA2. So these are two genes that is tested for to determine if an individual is at higher risk for breast cancer than the rest of the population. And so um, the BRCA1, and some may ask uh, which one is worse, is it the BRCA1 or the BRCA2? It is said that the, the BRCA1, the BRCA1, um, persons who have this mutation, it is a defective gene. There is a mutation in the gene that is passed on from parent to, to, to child. And if someone is diagnosed with breast cancer and is tested positive for BRCA1, it is, it is believed that the prognosis for that woman is worse than BRCA2. So we said the BRCA gene is actually a, a defective gene. There is a mutation in the gene that, that predisposes an individual to a variety of cancers, not just breast cancer, but breast, ovarian cancer, male breast cancer, prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer, and sometimes uh, melanoma, which is a skin cancer. So you ask, um, why does anyone have to have it? Now, in a little while, I'm going to be giving you a list of persons who should have, who should be tested for the BRCA1 and the BRCA2 gene. But for now, we, let's talk about other aspects of that BRCA testing. So when an, an individual is diagnosed with breast cancer, it is recommended that this person be tested, whether it's a man or a woman, be tested for this defective gene, the BRCA1 and the, and the BRCA2. And the reason for doing that is to determine whether the offsprings of that individual has a chance or is at risk for coming down with cancer. And some people ask, if I have the BRCA1 or the BRCA2, um, what should I do? Um, some, some, some people recommend that you know, a woman um, who's diagnosed with breast cancer and has the BRCA2 gene should probably go ahead and have a bilateral mastectomy. And we'll talk about that and you can Give me a little bit of your opinion whether you would have a bilateral mastectomy or not. But for now, we are focusing on the gene. So, oh, so this is one of the reasons why it's done. You want to determine whether offsprings and also the siblings, because when 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 a woman is dying with breast cancer, if if you have a sister or an auntie or a mom who has been tested positive, you want to you want to know whether you have that gene yourself. If your sister has it, it means your mom passed it on to your offsprings. And so you may have it, your siblings may have it, man and woman alike, because it's passed down to men as well. Um, so um, 
at what age should you really test for this BRCA1 and 2? And legally, any woman at the age of 18, legally, the legal age, can, have, can be tested for that BRCA gene. But ideally, it is recommended that a woman or man be tested in the late 20s or late 30s because this is the time when it is manifesting. So you probably want to wait, you know, a little later than 18 to get tested for the BRCA1 and 2. How much does that test cost? Well, you know, some insurance companies will actually cover the lab tests, right? So when you go to your physician and, and you, you, whether you were diagnosed with breast cancer or your sister is diagnosed with breast cancer and you want to have the test done, actually it is recommended that you first do genetic counseling. So you see a genetic counselor because they, you want them to explain to you what happens if I, if I am tested positive for that gene? What, what, what step should you take? What is the implication? What does it mean? And so um, once you and your physician and your genetic counselor have had this conversation in terms of whether you, you need to be doing genetic testing, then um, they will do a blood test or they will do a sub swab saliva and they will send it to the lab and the lab will test it and send it back to you and as i said some insurance companies pay for it some don't or some will do it partially but if you are going to pay out of pocket the cost can range from anywhere from 250 250 dollars for the lab tests and, and it really varies. And so um, you need to have all that information because that test is a pretty expensive test, especially if it's gonna be covered by insurance. It's probably about <clears throat> at least, I think $700 when I had the test done. And so um, if you have the test and you have talked to your doctor and your genetic counselor and you have a decision to make, you will make it you know, let's assume, you know, some people do what they call prophylactic mastectomy. Um, one of the movie actresses, I think, I can't remember her name, but she, her mom had breast cancer and she was tested positive for the BRCA gene. And she went ahead and, and had bilateral mastectomy. But that's a decision you would have to make. You would have to have that discussion, not only with your doctor, but if you're married with your husband and with your parents, you know, your siblings, a family, it's a family conversation that you need to be here and need to be having. And hopefully you have been through the council and, and you, are, you are informed that it, whatever decision you have decided to make, that you will be making an informed decision to have a, what we call a prophylactic mastectomy. Um, prophylactic meaning you are removing your breast ahead of coming down with breast cancer. So before you do that, you want to have that conversation. You want to make sure once you go ahead and have your breast removed that you are informed and this is exactly what you wanted to do. So let's talk about um, um, other questions that have been asked is can your dad pass the gene down to your, to your siblings? Well, of course, if the dad can acquire the gene from his parents, it means he can pass it down to his offspring. So it's really a family affair. And, and other people ask, can this gene jump from one generation to another? So they're saying, if your grandmother has it and your mom does not have it, can you get it? It doesn't jump generations. It's passed down from generation to generation. However, there are um, uh, um, uh, about 20% of persons who are diagnosed, 10 to 20% who are diagnosed with breast cancer who actually has no history of the BRCA in the family. So of course, there are many, many reasons why breast cancer develops, not just through genetic reasons, but other reasons like lifestyle, like you know, you know, diet and obesity and exposure to, you know, environmental and other issues, right? So let's talk about 
um, who needs to be tested for the BRCA gene? We said if your mother tests positive, you probably want to go ahead and, and know whether you have it. And if your sister tests positive, you want to know whether you have the defective gene as well. So I have my cheat sheet and I'm, I have a whole list of who needs to be tested. So I'm going to be using my cheat sheet to go down the list, okay? First, you want to know if the person has a history of breast cancer and it was diagnosed before age 45. And you know, a lot of young women are actually coming down with breast cancer at the age of 20 plus, 29, 30. You know, we have a lot of young women coming down with breast cancer. And as I've said in a previous video, a lot of the women who are coming down with breast cancer that early, uh, many of the times triple negative breast cancer. This is a very aggressive and a very deadly one we spoke about in one of our previous videos. So history of breast cancer diagnosed before the age 45 should have a BRCA test done. The breast cancer gene one, breast cancer gene two, which is called BRCA one, BRCA two. History of breast cancer diagnosed before 50 with one or more relatives, right? So cancer is diagnosed before 50 and you have a sister diagnosed breast cancer and an auntie diagnosed breast cancer or your mom, you have more than one relative with breast cancer. Or you have limited knowledge of your family history or you have no knowledge of your family history. You should get breast cancer gene testing done, genetic testing. If you have a history of triple negative breast cancer diagnosed at the age of 60 or younger, yeah? So if you are 50, 40, 30 plus, you know, you're younger than 60 and you were diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, you want to have BRCA testing done. If you have a history of two or more types of cancer, right? Two or more types of cancer, you probably want to go ahead and have the genetic testing done. If you have a history of ovarian cancer or a history of male breast cancer, you want to have the BRCA gene testing done. Um, if you have a history of breast cancer at a young age with two or more relatives, such as your parents, your siblings, or your children, you want to have BRCA testing done. A relative with a known BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutation. So if you're newly diagnosed with breast cancer and you know your auntie had breast cancer two years ago and she had testing done. Or you know your mom had breast cancer and she had testing done. And these women were tested positive for the BRCA gene. You want to have the genetic testing done, okay? And so when BRCA testing first came into being, one of the concerns was that after you've had the BRCA testing, um, people were worried that what if your insurance discovers that you've had this test and now you are at higher risk for breast cancer, does it put you at risk for losing your coverage? Well, um, with all these predisposing medical issues that are now lurking around our health insurance environment, you know, predisposing pre-existing pre conditions, and sometimes it may put you at a disadvantage, and sometimes it may not put you at a disadvantage. I don't think worrying about whether your health insurance finds out that you're BRCA1 should prevent you from going ahead and doing your testing. And so we want to know where, what our status, it is very, very important. You know, we always say knowledge is power. You have knowledge, you will know exactly what decision you need to, you need to take. And so definitely if you are one of these groups that I spoke about, whether it's breast cancer younger than 60, 
triple negative breast cancer, you have a, a sibling, an aunt or your mom, you know, diagnosed with breast cancer and positive for the BRCA1 and 2, you definitely want to be tested and do not let, you know, you know, extraneous factors like the impact on your health coverage and all that deter you from doing it. Um, this is why, you know, we have published material because we want to be educated and we want to know so what we need to do. And so I want to ask you guys, go ahead and make a comment. You know, you hit that topic and then the comment will drop down. I need you to interact as we publish educational videos. I need you to comment. If this video was informative and some things you didn't know before and you just learned something, you think it was good education, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. You see the thumbs up and the thumbs down icon right on the left side of your video. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to know more about, you know, the videos we are, I'm going to be coming out with, more education about breast cancer. We are going to be talking about bilateral mastectomy. Should you have it? Should you not have it? Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Hit that red subscribe button and see you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to Dr. Paula's Network. I appreciate it. See you next time. Bye.